Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, there's a lot of excitement in agriculture going into this year. One of the things farmers are really happy about is that Extend soybeans got labeled and are ready for use this season. We'll talk about the weed control options you now have. We also want to discuss micronutrient issues. How are you going to solve micronutrient problems on your farm? We want to talk through some of those micronutrients today, including boron, copper, zinc, manganese, and others. Of course, we'll be talking about weed control when it comes to our weed of the week. This is a pretty tough weed, but we'll show you how to stop it. We'll also explain how some of the best weed control options work coming up in this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we want to talk a little about soil residual with herbicides, both from a safety aspect and from a weed control standpoint. Well, if you've got a yard or a garden, or if you're a farmer, uh, you understand there are some weed control options out there that you have to get on before the weeds are even up. So you may wonder, well, how do they actually work if I'm putting this product out and the weeds aren't even there? What happens is farmers, or gardeners for that matter, will put herbicides out that can kill either the seed or typically the young seedling. This is great for the farmer or the gardener because then you never even see the weed. And the whole point is, if you can see weeds, well, <laughs> then they, they, they're robbing water and they're robbing nutrients from your crop. That's no good. So if you have the right pre-emerge herbicide that stops that weed before it ever even gets out of the ground, that's a good thing overall for yield. What's interesting to me is how selective some of these herbicides are that we would apply to the soil. For example, in gardening, one of the real common products used is preen. There's so many different crops you could be raising in your vegetable garden that you could put preen down and stop the weeds, but they don't hurt the crop at all. And there are other products that, hey, you can only use this around watermelons, or you could only use this around celery or something like that. All right, one of the most important things when we start talking about the residual life in the soil of any herbicide is what's the half-life? And right on the label, it will tell you typically how long that half-life is, or at least on the MSDS sheet, the material safety data sheet. What this means, the half-life is, let's say that I put out one pound, how long does it take for that one pound to be gone? Well, the half-life is gonna tell you how long does it take for half of that to be gone. So if let's say the half-life is 21 days, that means if I put one pound out, then 21 days later, I have a half a pound left. Now, that's assuming that we haven't used up a bunch of that with the weeds or used it up with the crop or whatever else. So if it's just literally sitting there in the soil, that's basically how long does it take for bacteria and everything else working in the soil to break it down. So if these soil residual type herbicides, it, it really depends on the soil in terms of how much farmers or gardeners will need to use in order to kill weeds. So if you have a very heavy soil, uh, it may tie up some of that chemical for a little bit longer. If you have a very light, sandy soil, it may be available right now. You get some moisture in the soil and the weeds can completely take it up or the plants completely take it up uh, and, and it disappears a little bit quicker. Uh, so it, it's going to vary and you're gonna to have to look on the label in terms of how much you'd need to apply for various soils. How about carry over into our next crop? Let's say a year from now we're planting another crop that we're not supposed to spray this herbicide on. Is that going to be gone a year from now or not? So you wanna take a look at things like the half-life and also for that matter, uh, just how sensitive is that crop to any remaining residual? Because let's say for example, maybe there's 1% of it left after a year. Is 1% of it enough to damage our crop or is it nothing to worry about? So that's where typically you need to talk to an agronomist in your area who understands your soils, your weather, your cropping rotation, everything else, to maybe give you a little bit better advice. Well, a good example would be preen, back to the, the start here, or for farmers that are raising soybeans, you may know it as Treflan. Uh, that chemistry is really good at controlling grass weeds. So you'd probably be most concerned about planting a grass crop back into that same soil the next year. So say that you're gardening and you're raising a variety of different broadleaf type plants. Uh, yes, you can use preen around all of those, but then next year you want to plant sweet corn in that area of the garden. Well, that's a grass plant. 
Uh, so you really have to watch what the rotational restrictions are, how soon you could plant that back following an application of preen. Okay, then let's talk about safety real quick because a lot of people worry that, oh, these herbicides are lasting forever in the soil. No, there are very, very few that will even last into the next year. Only some products we need to think about for many years in advance. But for the most part, a lot of these things are real safe. They're broken down naturally in the environment. They're used up by weeds and the weeds die. And they're also to some degree used up by crops and the crops metabolize them. They break them down, then there's nothing left in the environment. Well, there's certainly herbicides that get used on the soil to control weeds before they come up. It helps improve uh, plant growth. It helps improve yield in different areas of, of gardens and fields. And it can keep those tough weeds from becoming real problems, like our weed of the week can often become in areas where it grows. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. Technology is constantly changing the way we farm. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies are here to keep your farm at the forefront of agricultural innovation. With spray application equipment for any scenario, Hypro is here to put you right on technology, right on target. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Our CT applicators are changing the way you apply products to seed. The one thing we really like about the applicator is how uh, accurate it gets the fluid agent dispensed on the seed. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles resulting in even and accurate distribution. I would strongly encourage looking at one of these applicators. The biggest selling point is the pinpoint accuracy and we're not leaving dollars on the table. The CT applicator can be used with any seed delivery system at the time of planting. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. Are you storing grain in your bin from last harvest? You will want to avoid running your bin fans when the air is warm and wet to avoid sprouting and spoilage. The AgriDry Bullseye Controller has the capability to automatically run your fans when the weather conditions are safe for quality grain control. Stop monitoring the weather or babysitting your bins and let the Bullseye Controller keep your grain safe. Visit AgriDryLLC.com to find your local dealer today. At Fisher Tradition Farms, we verus all of our acres, and any new additional acres are automatically verused. Verus maps allow us to know exactly where our soil types change and how much they change. We use AgriLiquid's Enhance, High Energy N, and Access that allows us to add sulfur. We can customize our AgriLiquid products on a per pound, per acre basis as needed. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. Extend soybeans. As farmers, we've been waiting for these beans for a long time, and now they're finally out. But Darren, we still can't use dicamba over the top of beans. <laughs> well, it's the same thing <laughs> that we had with Extend Cotton when that came out last year. Hey, we can plant Extend Cotton that is tolerant to dicamba, but we don't have dicamba labeled for over the top use just yet. And in soybeans, hey, that's the case this year. We've got the label for the trait. So we can actually plant the newest genetics and get them out on our fields right. and try and get higher yields. But as far as weed control goes, we've got to look at what we've been doing in regular Roundup Ready soybeans to this point. All right, so to begin with, let's just talk about these extend beans and what we believe the future is for them. We think that there's a very real possibility that in 2017, over half the soybeans planted in the United States will be Roundup Ready to extend. The main reason why is because the new genetics are going into those, like Darren mentioned. So if you're a farmer thinking, oh, I'm going to save some money and I'm going to plant the older stuff, yes, you can certainly do that. But the problem is, how much are you going to give up in terms of yield? Let's talk about that yield piece. And, and I agree, the new varieties and, and really the last at least five years of breeding have been focused on getting extend varieties that are going to be the highest yielding ones. So uh, I was talking to one of the first guys working on extend 
uh, in our state and he said he had the first extend soybeans planted in the ground in 2006. And he said so we've had 10 years to sort out what are the best yielding genetics that are in the extend cross and he said we've got some really good ones now that are better than anything else that they've seen on the market. Uh, so when we look at Roundup Ready to Yield, that was a big jump forward uh, in terms of how they were putting the genes into the plant and, and how the yield was expressed. Uh, and we really didn't see the yield drag that we saw at the initial Roundup Ready trait. Now we've got this new extend, so the question of course is, well, is there any yield drag with this one? We haven't seen it. We, we had a lot of extend beans across our farm last summer. Uh, I've looked at plots all over the country of Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans, uh, and from what I've seen, they yield with or better than the Roundup Ready to Yield varieties. And, and to me, well, if I get more yield, and I've got the new trait uh, that I'm hopefully gonna be spraying dicamba on soon, that would be great. Uh, but you know what, even though you can't spray dicamba in the crop this year, there's still ways you can use dicamba on your farm to fight tough weeds. Here's the thing I like the most. Now we can go around all our field borders and spray dicamba. Think about where all the weeds come from. It's the ditches, it's the fence lines where the weed control isn't good. And a lot of guys say, well, I don't wanna spray 2,4-D or anything and possibly damage my crop. Well, now you don't have to worry about it. You can spray dicamba, Banville, or Clarity. That's what we did on our farm last year. It was amazing. So now we had everything clean, not not just the fields and now we're going to have a lot fewer weeds blowing into our fields that's really the thing i'm most excited about or i'm almost as excited about the burn down opportunities so you can go out there and spray a full rate and i'm not talking a pint i'm talking a quart okay if i can go with a quart per acre we do this a lot in the fall and i'm telling you what a quart per acre wipes out everything you tell me any weed that a quart Brother. per acre isn't going to kill i mean for that matter grass even nah. it's it's nah. not going to be it's not going to be perfect on grass <laughs> but i'll bet you we get 60% control I'm glad, on grass. I'm glad you're excited. The, the whole well, thing I is am. you can, you can awesome. add Roundup to it very inexpensively and kill 100% of the grass, other than any that may be Roundup resistant, uh, which there are very few around the country that are. There are a few. Yeah, but hey, let me finish up on this burn down thing. You've got to make sure the weather's warm, okay? We've tried spraying dicamba when it's 50 degrees out in the spring. Doesn't work. Just like when we've tried spraying Roundup in the spring when it's 50 degrees. you got to let the weather get warm. Now, we don't have a nighttime temperature cutoff like we do with Roundup. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to refine that over time, but I would just say if you can get a day where the temperature is 70 degrees, that's a good day to spray dicamba. So if you're holding out hope, well, maybe I'll plant them and, and maybe dicamba is going to get labeled in time for this season. Don't count on dicamba getting labeled in crop. What you can count on, though, is getting great weed control pre-emerge. We've been talking about our three pre-strategy for years now. So we're talking about using one of the yellows, like Treflan, Sondland, or Prowl, Metribuzin, and then one of the PPOs, Authority or Valor. When you use all three of those products as your pre-emerge program, we're going to control 99% of the weeds and, and do a great job. Now, we're not going to get every weed season long. You're going to have to come back post. And when we're doing this pre, think about it. None of those options can be used post-emergent soybeans. So we haven't taken anything off the table. All your options are wide open. So you still have Flexstar on the table if you want to use that. Uh, you can use Cobra. You could use Cadet. There's a number of products post-emerge that could be used to help your Roundup out where we've got Roundup resistance. All right, so once again, you know, with Roundup Ready to extend here, we're super excited. We just think this is gonna be a great weed control option in the future. And even today, being able to spray your ditches, fence lines, everything else, you can you can definitely do a burn down, just follow the label in terms of the burn down as well. But it just opens up so many possibilities in soybeans, and we are excited about the yield. So we would just encourage you to start taking a look at these beans because this is the direction that a lot of the market is going. Well, one of the weeds that the new Extend system could help you out on is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Introducing the Soilmax ZD48, the newest addition to the Soilmax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The Soilmax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. 
but only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. The experience from the salesman to the building crew all the way through was just pleasant and professional. I feel that the people at Morton are my friends. I'll do anything for them because I felt they met that with me. I wouldn't have anybody build me a building other than Morton. I wouldn't even consider anybody else. It pays to go look around, but by far Morton's got the best building and we're just so pleased with it. Contact Morton Buildings today during our Building Value Day sales event. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. For lower costs, higher production, Mantico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mantico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. How will you fix micronutrient issues on your farm? And really, let's start with this. Do you even know if you have micronutrient issues on your farm? Are you soil testing for all the micros? I'm not talking just zinc. A lot of people get a zinc test. But what we're talking about is zinc, iron, manganese, copper, boron, are incredibly important for your crop. Are you testing for them in the soil? Are you doing plant tissue analysis? Because here's what we're finding. 99% of farmers are short on one or more micronutrient. We found that with plant tissue analysis. We've also found the exact same thing with soil testing. All right, when it comes to micronutrients on the farm, we're seeing more people soil test across the country. And we get the question, well, I haven't run micro tests before. How much more does it cost? A complete soil test costs like $26 at Midwest Labs where we send our samples to. But looking at these micros, we, we found there's going to be a shortage in almost every case. And then when we see some of these micros, it's amazing to me how incredibly deficient we are. We've got some soil on our farm where we see manganese levels down to three parts per million. We'd like to see them at 20 to 40 parts per million on a Midwest Lab soil test. And, and then the question becomes, well, is it really worth it to build up one of those micros? We'll get to how to exactly build them up here in just a second. A lot of people have looked at micronutrients in the past and said, you know what? I don't want to waste any of my time thinking about that because everybody talks about N, P, and K. Hey, we get that. I'll just tell you, on our own farm, we used to average 130 bushel corn about 12 years ago or so. That was it. That was our 10-year average. Well, now we're real close to 200 on corn, and we're over 60 on soybeans. And we've done that in part due to the fact that we started addressing micronutrients. We started addressing it in a small way. So we were using a lot of TJ Micromix or Micro 500, some of these micronutrient blends. And I'm not saying they're bad, they're good. But the problem now is, as we're shooting for the next yield goal, and last year we had a lot of 225, 240 bushel corn, now we say, ooh, if we're gonna get to 300, look at how low we are in manganese, or look at how low we are in zinc. We gotta do something more than just some little micro blend in furrow at planting time. All right, let me give you one example. So there's a farmer not far from us that we work with who had a dramatic manganese shortage on his farm. And, and he said, man, everything else is in good shape. The only thing it looks like I need is manganese. Is it really worth doing? And, and so he had manganese spread on his farm, except he left a couple of check strips. When he hit the first check strip in the fall of 2015, it was 31 bushels better where he put the manganese on versus where he didn't. When he got to the other end of the field and, and did the other check strip, it was 38 bushels better where he put the manganese on versus where he didn't. I don't care what crop we're talking about, corn, soybeans, wheat, sugar beets, barley, oats, every crop out there needs these micronutrients. Now, yes, they need them in different proportions, but the whole thing is micronutrients are tremendously important. Now, just because you put some manganese on, and that doesn't mean you're automatically going to gain 30 bushels. That might not be your yield limiting factor. And the other thing to look at is that might not be the yield limiting factor in that spot in that field. 
we just encourage you to do zone sampling or to do grid sampling because what we find in our operation is just like we find almost all around the country. Um, yep, manganese is a limiting factor in this field, in this area, but in the other area of the field, it might be phosphorus. In the other area of the field, it might be potassium. We've got to address things in different levels depending on what we've already got in the soil. For example, let's say grandpa hauled manure all the time right behind the place and you've got a great big field now that includes some of that area. Well, guess what? Some of that area where grandpa used to haul manure, you don't need nearly as many nutrients as you do in some of the other areas of the field. All right, and this goes well beyond plant nutrition. When we think about a livestock operation, maybe you're chopping silage on your farm and feeding it to your cattle. If you can increase micronutrient levels in your plant, so in your corn, your silage is gonna have more of those micronutrients and ultimately your cattle have more of those micronutrients. And then if you spread that manure back out on your field, you're gonna be putting more micronutrients back in your field. It's a great cycle. Here's what we suggest you do. We really encourage you to do soil testing in either grids or zones. Okay, then apply fertilizer where needed. You might not need it on the whole farm, but apply it where you need it. Follow up by doing some plant tissue analysis. We suggest every week for eight to 12 weeks and find out how you're doing. You can always do some foliar feeding or side dressing later, but for the most part, we would encourage you, hey, let's get the whole field addressed on whatever it needs, either in the spring or in the fall in big applications, if those are needed, uh, and then do some little stuff, some little blended stuff right at planting time. Getting your nutrient levels in the crop is very important, but so is keeping the weed competition out of the field. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is Jerusalem artichoke. I know it, we got you. You thought, oh, that's sunflower, isn't it? It does kind of look like sunflower, but believe me, it does not act like sunflower once it's out in the field. And many times I'll talk to farmers across the country that say, man, I had this sunflower out there and it just kept coming back and coming back and I couldn't get rid of it. And I say, really, did you dig up the plant or did you try and pull it out of the ground? And when a guy does try to pull it, it's like, man, it's got all the stuff attached to it. It's got these runners that are going out to the side. I'm like, yeah, those are called stolons. And it's got this big thing under the ground. Yeah, that's a tuber. And what, what happens with Jerusalem artichoke is you can kill the top growth. And we see many times guys doing that. Maybe in wheat, they're using something with some 2,4-D or in pasture or ditches, something like that. They're using 2,4-D or they're using dicamba. They're effective at controlling top growth. However, if we want to get down into those stolons and tubers, the only thing we've seen that works very well is Roundup. Well, that's in crop. I mean, in a Roundup ready crop or as a burn down. But you certainly could go out there with something like Tordon in pastures. That ought to wipe it out. And you know what? In, I, in pastures, I can use a high rate of 240. That's better than using the low rate that you might use in or near crops. So, you know, we have some options. We just unfortunately don't have a lot. Now, if you find this crazy looking sunflower plant out there that just won't die, chances are you may have our Weed of the Week, Jerusalem Artichoke. It's all the time we have for this week's weed, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. It was very smooth driving down the road and especially in the field. The visibility is just excellent in it. The wide panoramic view is very beneficial in getting accurate spraying done. I've done a lot of shopping, I've done a lot of price comparing. I could see right away that for what I was getting in this machine versus the competition, this machine will do anything and everything that any competitor's machine will do and it'll definitely help my bottom line at the end of the year.
Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit copperheadag.com. Uh, we have a school and a church nearby. I actually go to the classroom to educate the students about what's going on here on my farm. The system that I have, I tie everything together. No-till, cover crops. We applied AgriLiquid in furrow with our soybeans this year. It seemed like they jumped out of the soil, even though we had the record rainfall. I really feel that I'm feeding my plant on a consistent year-round basis throughout the growing season. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Ever wonder if you are over drying or spoiling your grain when you turn on the fans? Do you worry about the condition of your grain all winter long? Are you able to see what is happening in your bins? AgriDry will give you peace of mind with our 24-hour monitoring system. View real-time grain bin data online from a web-enabled device. AD Link will send you alerts when sensors are triggered by potential grain problems. Stop worrying and start storing quality grain with AgriDry. Visit agridryllc.com today. As weed resistance becomes more of a problem across the country, your crop protection program needs to stay flexible to be effective. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies' wide selection of spray tips and nozzle configurations are available to keep your crop protection program right on technology, right on target. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. How important is planting population, and how are you monitoring it? I'll give you a couple ideas in today's Iron Talk. First of all, do you own a smartphone or an iPad? I hear a lot of jokes that smartphones aren't so smart, but do you know how to make yours even smarter? Download valuable farming apps like the Ag PhD Planting Population app. We developed this app with some help from Case IH to assist you in your corn and soybean crops with determining the stands that you're achieving. For example, let's say you're planting corn. You're shooting for 32,000 plants per acre in a 30-inch row, but how far apart should the seeds be as you're digging up the trench behind your planter to see if everything's going well? Just type in your information, and you can see that you need a seed every six Point five inches through the field to get to 32,000 plants per acre. What if we figure it the other way? Choose the stand population tab and type in your 30 inch rows. The app tells you how many feet you need to go to equal one one thousandth of an acre. In this case, it's 17 feet 5 inches. So you go 17 feet 5 inches and find either 31 seeds or 31 plants. That would show you that you've got a final population of 31,000 per acre. The app is free and it's really easy to use. Again, just go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and download the free Ag PhD Planning Population app. Good luck with planning this spring and stay safe. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. We take your live phone calls each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
Did you realize that a healthy soil only contains about 50% dirt? In order for the soil microbes and plants to work together properly, soil should contain 25% air and 25% water. Today's farming practices are designed around maintaining that healthy balance. To learn more, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.